We're videotaping as always. Thank you to the North Street Association. Yeah. Um, public comment. Anybody want to comment? Yes. Um, for your consideration in the packages are these lists of municipal properties. I've talked, I've spoken with Deanne and Bob Reckman. Um, my thought is, my hope is, that you'll see fit to append this to your report. Um, I believe the intention of the task force is that the city does not get a bill. But I can see in six months or two years or six years, people saying, oh, wait a minute, does that include the housing authority? And it'll all be fuzzy by then. So I'm not advocating that this list is your list. I, you know, I would encourage you all to look at it and say, yeah, yeah, that's what we mean. Or, or no, no, that shouldn't be in there, right? <clears throat> I'm not trying to steer you in either direction, but I, I think it'd be terrific if there was, at the end of the process, a list. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you. <clears throat> Second thing, um, I asked Doug to make another list. Uh, again, I'm just trying to provoke a discussion. This is a list of federal and state properties. Um, for some reason, because of the city coding, the Audubon sanctuary is in lumped in with state property. We understand it isn't state property, but it's an interesting property nonetheless. And if you see fit to discuss it, it might be worth a, a moment's uh, thought or a few moments of discussion. These, like the post office, they get a bill uh, for water, for sewer. Yep. Um, so this is this second list is for your considering just discussion. These should all be included already in our numbers, correct? Yeah, they are, just not to the level of detail that the properties are called out. So right, yeah. but they fall they fall into the, the large category. They do. Okay. Yeah. Are they under other, Jim, or under tax exempt? I'm assuming that they'd be under. So I'm just trying to shine a light on this and make sure that other isn't too much of a catch-all with very little understanding. Good break up on here. Thank you. Oh, sure. Any other comments? <laughs> I would like to ask a couple of questions. Number one is back in March when the committees first started meeting and the local newspaper carried an article about the stormwater fee being considered. It says in the article, which is quoting some officials in the city, that there was a letter sent to the Board of Public Works from the Army Corps of Engineers as well as from the EPA, Environmental. I would like a copy of those letters. I have asked two or three different people about it and no one seems to have been able to have it. And the reason for that is that back early on there was a meeting held in Washington where our mayor was invited to attend the meeting to ask for a waiver or to be considered for a waiver. And that letter is very important to some people, including me. So I'd like to have a copy of the letter that was sent that started this whole agency of appointing a committee. Number two, I would like the written minutes of all the meetings that this Stormwater Ad Hoc Advisory Task Force has held. I have talked to her. They are on YouTube. The and uh, I understand that. But I would like written copies of the ones that have been held. And if I may, Mr. Walker, I believe that copies of, written copies of all the minutes we have approved are available on the website of the committee task force, on the, DP, the BPW website under stormwater task force. Yes, they are. In addition, um, the report, the final report that we'll be submitting to the joint uh, committee and the city council will have, as part of the appendix, all of the minutes of all the meetings. Very good. Thank you. 
Do we want? Uh, do we want to include the the two letters? I'm not. I don't know what it's from the EPA. Yeah. Yeah. The one. Yeah, the one from the EPA. EPA is talking about is the one that actually said, I believe, is the one that says that we have to start collecting all this this data. It's the very okay. first document yeah. that came into the city that started everything. Isn't that the one you're looking for? All I know is that the community has uh, said that we received a letter from the EPA as well as the Army Corps of Engineers telling us what we needed to do to meet the mandates of the federal and state government. If I might just say something, Mr. Walker. Also, there's the response letters from the mayor, uh, Mayor Higgins at the time, and I think Ned responded to EPA. I think that's on the website, the response. Those are on the website. They, yes. they were. We had a small problem with the server about two weeks ago, and we're reestablishing all the links that were there. Some of the links still don't work. NYS had a crash down at City Hall and just don't turn the things together. I usually believe that's working. Was that on the cloud net or was that in the office? <laughs> uh, that was downtown. Okay. But they're moving to the cloud, I believe. A big disaster. I love that term. <laughs> okay, well, I think either way, I think we can, we'll be able to get copies. I'd like to move that we. I don't know if we need to do that. Well, if they're all going to come out for the city council, that will be early enough. Oh, yeah. I think that, that, that everything that we have will be submitted. That's well, all we need. Everything that we're privileged to. That's all we need yeah. is that. That's not necessarily package. true. I don't think we're going to provide copies. I mean, the website, if you look at the website that Jim and Doug have been maintaining and probably made as well, there's a lot of resources and I mean there's all kinds of good stuff on there. I don't think we're going to, I mean, it would be like that. this. Yeah, our report no, 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 no. would be So I think, thing. you know, I, what we originally were planning on was minutes. I'd like to suggest that we include the letters right. and the responses. Yeah. I think yeah. that would be good, That's what I mean. which means we probably need to reference it in the inter introduction somewhere. Yeah. They are on the, the links, though, yeah. or if, if you want to see them. So, Paul, just to clarify for you, uh, make sure that you're happy with the answers. Uh, what I heard was that uh, the letters and the responses and all of the minutes, and Chris, uh, was there the letter, the responses, the minutes, plus our, our actual documentation will all be part of the report that will be submitted to the City that, Council? That, that was my understanding. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that, uh, in, in addition to that, that all of this is available on the... DPW, DPW website that you know you may not have personal access, but someone I that you I, but someone you know. Do. So, have we answered those questions uh, satisfactorily? Well, know? I'm anticipating what you're telling me is they will be included at the presentations for the city council. Be if they're not, the request will be formally made again. I would say, Paul, they'll be included in our report. I don't expect we'll talk specifically about those documents. They'll certainly be a part of our final report to the Joint Committee. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. All right. And you're, and you're good with those answers? Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other comments before we move to the next item? <coughs> Great. Um, minutes from May 29th. Move approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good job. Yeah. <coughs> Um, new fee algorithms from committee members. I don't believe we have any new ones. I do have Doug took what I had proposed last time, uh, wrote it up, and put it into the same spreadsheet uh, that all the other ones are in. So I think it would be worth looking at that. Were we able to get Smith? I don't think so. Not the building. Smith data has to come from Smith. Yeah. 
Just for my own clarification, can I ask a question? We settled on two that we're going to propose, right? In yes. our report? We did. We've got everything listed on here still. Yes. We're going down to what's called Felton 3, and which one on here would you call the other one? Clark ERU Plus. That's what I thought. Which one? Thank you. Plus undeveloped? Yeah. This one, yeah. okay. So we can we just drop all the others off of this now, or do you want to keep them here for... Well, this is just for discussion. I think what, you know, one of the things we'll want to do is um, present those two in the body of the report. Okay, but these are the two that we're recommending. Right. Okay. That's what I thought, and then I looked at this and I got confused again. I get confused easily, I'm sorry. Everyone has that. Yeah. yeah. So, a couple, so a couple things that I'll, um, I'll point out. And the, the numbers are, you know, I think, let's see if I have my last time. Well, I presented last time. I don't. Um, I don't know if anybody has. The, the numbers are approximately the same. Um, they may have, the averages may have gone up um, five to eight dollars for the residential. Um, Something skewed. Yeah, can I see that? Dan? It's twisted now. Instead of single family and then going up for two family, two family has dropped below single family. It has. And it's because of the size of buildings and the size of properties. So there's nothing okay. inherently bigger about a two-family house necessarily, you know. So what, what we didn't have, what I didn't have last time was the listing for all single, two-family, and three-family houses. And it seems like we actually, from the GIS data, we have impervious, uh, pervious and building size already um, laid out for all of the residential properties, as well as all the non-residential properties. So that data seems to already be available. So when I, so what we went, then we went through, took the, the algorithm for the formula, and went through the properties and came up with an average for single, two, and three family. And that's how it works out. Because for a single family, you end up with much larger properties. Driveways and all that, not all that different. And building size, the average building size for single family um, was 1,900 square feet. And I, um, I think the, let's see if he has it laid out. Yes, yeah, right in the yeah. table. At the yeah. top, under building areas. Yeah, so the average building area for two family is 2,058, and a three family is 2,400. So, but nonetheless, the single families pay more, more than the two families, even though their okay. average building size is smaller. The other factors must kick in. We're if calm. you use the average, that's okay. how, that's how okay. it plays out. <laughs> now, there's no reason what, you know, again, we have all of the data. Okay. This is something that has changed in my understanding, is that we actually have all of this data. It's not necessarily uh, measured data. It's GIS data, which has some factor of... Uh, error, I guess, associated with it, but we actually have data for every single property in the community. Hmm. I must be looking at something Yeah, Chris. I'm not advocating this, but if I was an elected official, I could easily see that that being a, a, a point where I might institute a fudge factor so that two multifamily, that a single family was going to pay less, regardless of what the formula tells us. I might consider kicking that up to say 146. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, not two. advocating it. I'm just I'm laying it out there because sure. I think there're going to be people. I mean, Ruth, I, I I noted that I think last time as well, and I didn't I didn't really think that hard on it, but I think Ruth's bringing it up. You know, I think people are going to. That's going to be one of the uh, one of the questions people raise, and yeah. it, it makes it makes the, the, the descriptive portion of our of of the work around how these things are calculated a little more complicated. Um, I also note, and I'm doing this from memory, but um, 
Uh, I see that the undeveloped land uh, went up 30 bucks. I, yep. think, I think you had it pegged at 100 last go round. Yep. Yeah. Do we know what that? Um, Why that went up? Yeah. Yeah, it's because I didn't have all that data. Gotcha. And okay. so when we went through and it did the calculations, it was just some assumed numbers, mm -hmm. rough estimates. That's all changed. Now we yeah. actually have real numbers. Dan. Well, this is all I think I'm. Real numbers. Yeah. I think I must still be missing something because for a single family compared to a two family, two family has a larger impervious area. They have a larger um, building area. What else figures into it to make it less? Total area is almost exactly the same. Um, Actually, it if, is the if same. I could, if I could try to explain I'm missing these, something. These, these fees in, Dan, in Felton 3 are based uh -huh. on averages that the total area and the impervious, sorry, the total area and the pervious area shown in this table are not, it, the, there's averages used. Right. That you can, if you look at this, you'll see how the single family, two family, and three family sure. are oh, calculated. Okay, sorry. It's not, you can't pull that out of, out the, of the information on the chart. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Exactly. Because Helpful. it's a Thank different you. way of doing it. And it sort of goes back to Fred Zimnock's original, um, you know, it's when you, when you look at the average, so for single family, this is one of the interesting things that Doug and I were talking about today, there are a, a few properties that are well in excess of 20, 30 acres. You know, to, I don't know, 100 acres that counts as a residential. And what happens is, when you, so a very small percentage of the overall properties are huge. And it took the average uh, pervious, or the average property size up to an acre. But the median, right, where half of the properties are below and half are above is actually a third of an acre. So there's this big skew where you've got a very few properties that are huge. The bulk of the properties are sort of in that much less than an acre range. And when it ends up, when you go through and you sort of correct for using a one acre max, the average comes out to be, so again, we're using a one acre ma maximum to determine that part of the fee. The average comes down to 17, 14 or 17,000 square feet, like which is roughly a third of the acre. So, again, this is all. This all kind of came out today when this table of all the data showed up. What's I think here on the left is not really. Relevant. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid. No, I look at this, and we've been working with this, but I look at this, and i got to tell you, I don't, I, I, we've talked about it, and I still don't understand it, but it's probably just because I'm not an engineer. I get the first part, but then you get into hydraulic, this, that, and the other thing, and I'm lost. What is hydraulic? Hy hydraulic is, is fluid, in this case, water. Oh, okay. And what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the contribution of water from different surfaces. So you've got a building surface, a, uh, a, a non-building but impervious surface, and then a, a pervious surface like grass or cropland or wooded area. Other right? than the top part where you've got average building area, other impervious area, and then you've got water, other impervious area? And so then based on, so again, these, this, this, these columns on the left here are, are remnants of previous um. ways. It was actually generated for Bob and um, Terry. Terry's models because they were looking at pure structures based on property size. SF um, square foot? <laughs> so... Is SF square foot? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if I sit down to explain this to somebody, i got to be able to understand it. Well, yeah, and again, this is not... This table, ultimately, I don't, I'm not sure is is the best representation of the for your particular point. Yeah, I, I was yeah. looking at the description. Yeah. If I wanted to show this to Tony to explain it to him, yeah. I've got to be able to understand sure. it, and I don't. How about shouting so. <laughs> I've been getting phone calls all day. I, I was 
telling Doug about, about, about stormwater. About stormwater. Somebody talked to Chad Kane, who has talked to Marianne LaBarge and Tony Patello and a bunch of other people who all called me. You guys made a decision last night. We didn't even have a meeting last night. <laughs> and, yeah, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> and you've decided on $83 a month. And I said, we haven't decided on anything yet, and we're recommending two different fees, structures, so it could be either one, and both of them are at least over $100, so yeah. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but he's doing an article in the Gazette, and he's planning on putting that we've decided on $83 a month as our recommendation, so yeah. when it comes out, be prepared. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris, I, I understand your point about the politicians may want to make some fudge factors, which would make mm -hmm. it more explainable. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. one of the virtues of Dan's approach is it really is mathematical. Mm -hmm. So I would hope, against hope perhaps, that our elected officials would say, there's a real formula for how you figure this out, and it's strange that two families should pay less than a single family, but that's what the numbers are. I, I, I understand yeah. your... Yeah, yeah. If I, could just, I, I think, and I'm perfectly comfortable with that, I, I just think that um, for, for simplicity's sake, that if I was in that position, that might be like the way I would go. But what, what it leads me to is, is something I've been thinking about um, while we were doing the drafting of our, our various pieces, which is I, I'm even more committed to the idea of providing... Um, at some point, and, 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 or at least offering to provide at some point, um, some sort of FAQ that explains this in, in layman's terms. It, it, not just this thing, but for instance, um, uh, we don't have a glossary. Um, and people are going to wonder what pervious and impervious means and how, yeah. we, and how we determine those things. So I think that, there, I think that there's still more work to do that, that, and I don't know if we're the people to do it, but that, that, that I feel will make it a lot easier for people to understand what it is that's going to come out at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. yeah. And along the same lines, I would hope. Probably be in, in the report right off the bat. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not advocating more work for ourselves no. because I think some of us have hit saturation, if I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but, um, I'm at but, point seven. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that, that these are these are the kinds of these are the kinds of. Um, uh, more simple level of detail that are going to make the, make whatever we do a, a, a more user friendly thing, not just not just for the city council, but a, explaining the, the work to data to the public. So. Yeah, some of the cities have nice glossaries in them with with definitions. Yeah. We might not have to redo it; we could just take them right out of somebody else's, like sure. Westfield. They have a nice plagiarism? definition. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You uh, bet. Yeah, <laughs> you bet. Why redo the work if it's already that's done? That's right. Yeah. That's a good idea. I would also hope that we could maybe refigure the categories for the residential areas if they are misleading in terms of what how Dan's numbers come out. If they're an artifact of an earlier model which we've not chosen to recommend, there might be a better way to format that residential information. Get rid of the tiers. I don't. I don't know, but clearly there's, it's confusing to many of us. We are, we ultimately don't need tiers. For the two models, so that needs to produce. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that could just come out. They're going to have to stay in because we're going to give them the rest of the models. Well, but that we could they could stay in for the rest of the models, and then we could have another chart that had no tiers, that just had your model and Dan's model, because that's the two models we're recommending. To simplify. Yeah. Right. When you say the tiers, you mean based on mm -hmm. on on. Well, gosh, yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't. Gotcha. Um, just, have, just, to, just to point out, first, do we want... We're recognizing Terry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I appreciate what uh, Bob said about how the math is, what the math is. And, for example, two family might, in fact, under this model, cost less than one family. Is there a mathematical background for the $130 for undeveloped property? Yes. One acre, 10, 50, it's 130. One, one acre max is, is because undeveloped has no impervious surface to it, it gets a charge based on a maximum of up to, you know, so anything up to an acre, you get charged based on the square foot, and after that it's a, it's so a wash. So that is somewhat arbitrary. It's totally arbitrary. Yeah. Okay. 
It is. It's, it's, not, it's not somewhat about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not arbitrary. I mean, it reflects no. the... Uh, but, but, but the model breaks down a little bit in that sense that there's no way to... Well, so does the ERU model, actually, with an undeveloped pig. There's, it's just flat an arbitrary, it's arbitrary yeah. flat P based on that three family. So, you know, there's only there's so many ways you can do it. Right. Otherwise, what happens is the fees will shift to, un I mean, because the, un the undeveloped properties are so big, that was what we had seen. It didn't all shift, but you end up with, instead of one to 200,000 going to some of those properties, it's like five to 600,000. Which is pretty hard to justify. Yeah, no, I so wrestled with the same thing. So, so there's several big parcels that throw the average on the for which for the, for the residential. residential. There's a, there's, yeah, there's probably a couple dozen. Yeah. Out of a thousand. You know, yeah, which, that really thousand. throws off. The they average. really throw it off. Yeah. And like the recognized net home. So is the reason why you don't you're taking those outliers that are skewing the results and throwing them off as that normally so you could pick them up under area or acreage anyways for the fee because there's extra acreage they have rather than a acre or a half acre house lot well, because they are abnormalities that are skewing the results they are and they so that all depends if we take the average approach the approach of an average for single family then all single families pay you know 144 144 dollars and that's just, you know, it's not a site-by-site -site basis. Um, the other way to do it is to is to do it. I mean, we've got the data. We can do that. There's no, it's not. This would, this re, this would be 27 pages long yeah. once you start to. It would be uh, huge. Yeah, once yeah. You, because everybody's going to have a different parameter. It would be a fiasco. It, 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 it would. would be very tough. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying so, don't do it. So, well, I was going to say, but, so are you, are you, do you think that it, it, in the long run, we're better off explaining the one anomaly as opposed to trying to run through all of that data? Uh, I think that, uh, I'll try to answer that question straight on, that the facts, the what Dan has, or what everyone has developed here, the facts are the facts. And we can't dispute the facts, but we can dispute what we're going to do with them. Then there's the arbitrary part, even to the caps, because the caps are arbitrary too. Right. So somewhere in the report, and, and I, I think Ruth is spot on in terms of, you know, that glossary that would help everybody because oh, yeah. I, it's just very difficult. Yeah. I can pull it together this week. So if you have the glossary and then you have the facts, and then if you have, and we rely on the facts of Dan and the engineers in the room, you can't dispute what they've come up with unless someone uses a different set of parameters. Mm -hmm. Then then they're going to get disputed, but it's going to be fact to fact. Gotcha. But then with the arbitrary stuff like the 100 uh, whatever, 130, 100, bucks. 130 bucks, you know, that's where the elected officials could say, let's make it $175 or $95. That's, a, that's an arbitrary decision that anybody can go back and, and change. And Dan, I assume in your model, if we were to say that this, you, you pay for two acres, no, how big, no matter how much your property is, how big your property is, that would not make much of a difference for the average fees for residential property, probably. Is that correct? It would go up. Up some, but not significantly, I wouldn't think. A pervious acre. Yeah, actually, they, it's hard to know. I don't know. I have to go through yeah. it. So that'd be another way that perhaps this could be tweaked <coughs> a little bit. I'm curious about when you need to raise more than two million, when it goes up to three million, what happens to these sort of if there's no formula behind it, how do they then calculate? Well, there, there is a, it's, the formula is an, is an algorithm that mm -hmm. takes the average, mm -hmm. and then you, the rate that's applied, which is 2.98 cents per square foot. So what we're determining for the average is the square footage, and then you multiply that, you know, the hydraulic acreage and square footage is then multiplied. Times. Okay, so it's the worst. So, so you would just change the number goes up to nine. Change, <laughs> yeah. make okay. a point, and then it goes up to 2.5 okay. million. But one of the things that you want to remember is that we're putting a limiting cap on this thing, the increase each yes. year, and it can't go up any more than, let's say, 2.5% if, if they choose to tie that to it. Uh, and so 
And it would also go with a sunset clause to review this after three years, after five years, whatever the city council decides is the time frame. I, I would suggest three years. You know, but uh, they should review it and see that it's doing what it's supposed to do. I I think that when you particularly when you're talking to people in the public or somebody in the newspaper, the two you know, the the two million is really arbitrary. It could be much less than that, it could be much more than that. That's just a figure that we use to put a uh, to put some uh, definition to the formula. Well it's a it's a a figure that was put together with some fact behind it. I believe that, but it's not a figure yeah. that we've as a committee, no. study it. It's nothing that we recommend. We don't right. recommend ten two million dollars. I, I no. agree with you. Okay. No, we just need to say that the fees presented are based on a two million dollar right. target. target. Yeah. Which and we, we need to go into that too a little bit and say that you know this is not really fixed and it could be significantly more or less. But I don't think we really talked about that. Yeah, that's yeah, not I our charge just, either, though. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think we're just going to leave that the number. Up to the our charge is to fund that. Yeah. 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 Right. We, we had to we, start with some number. Because we have that number. Was a, we do need to bend well, that again, it's, as, as Jim says, it's based, on, it's based on a certain amount of research that DPW did that, that you know, holds together pretty well. Yeah. You know. yeah. um, but in their wisdom, our elected officials could decide that $3 million is the number. Um, yeah. And then they'll just... Do what, That's not for us. Do what Megan was worried about, which is fifty percent more. Yeah, recalculate. Re yeah. re but that audit trail goes back to the DPW, not to us. Yeah, I don't see the elected officials doing that. So just to, because you're probably better at math than me, uh, ERU, if we were to raise three million instead of two million, the single family home fee, the ERU fee, would go up. Here. I don't know if yeah. that necessarily works that way. Okay. Yes. It would. It it's would. going to be proportional. To all that. the numbers. Yeah. It would be all proportional Everything would go to that ERU. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes that simple for the board to, you know, adjust that fee. Um, but, you know, we are starting to talk about much bigger numbers when we go up past that. So, so you know, if we stay if we stay focused on the two models, and I just I think it's worth sort of having the, having this discussion about <clears throat> about the two models and about sort of where the you know the, the major differences are. You know, the somebody mentioned the undeveloped land. You know, one of the things you know, that shows up in the Clark model, which is different, and it's not. You know, uh, not better, not worse. It's just it's definitely different. Is you you know a 50 acre property is going to spend 745 dollars, and in in my model it was 130. And one of you know so so that's I mean it, I I sort of like the, the gradated undeveloped parcel fee on some level. Um, but you then have these large properties, large residential properties that are 50 acres or more that, you know, then the argument would be, you know, they're primarily undeveloped. If you look at a percentage basis, you know, they're 1%, you know, if you have 10 square feet of impervious, all of a sudden you're developed. It is a flaw. And yeah. you pay almost nothing relative to the, you know, so. I figured that would get looked at. Um, further up the road because uh, it is sort of arbitrary to set that number. There might be a reason for a cap on, on that kind of, uh, you know, that 745 is 50 acres times 15. Right. And so, um, you know, that may be the number that you work with that the 15 per acre is a, is a different number to, to sort of limit that. Because I, I think there is a benefit to that open space. You know, well, so. so when you go from two million to three million, does that go up proportionally, mm -hmm. or is it just fifteen dollars forever? Yeah. So, so that's something that you know. So some of these arbitrary, you know, 
these arbitrary things, because all of what we came up with had some degree of this to it. These are the things that are going to be the most difficult to implement. And yeah, the ERU directly without a, a undeveloped fee doesn't have that flaw. By having every property owner participate, it, it requires it, you know, that undeveloped land get charged something. So, you know, it's, it's too big for me to actually sort of determine what that could be. So, you, uh, you know, I picked a three-family house as for 10 acres. It seemed reasonable. If you got 50 acres, it does start to add up, you know, 750 bucks a year. So, that's you're right. I don't know what we can do about it. I'm seeing for one acre, it's $15. Is that right? right? But he's doing 10 acres for, for three families is where he did his. So if I heard what yeah. you just said. Yeah. yeah. So for 10 acres, it would be a three family house. So with that, absent any absolute number, then you can figure out what that per acre fee would be. And the three right. family house. If the rate goes up to three million a year and everything's fifty percent higher than you base that ten acre fee on the you know the fifty percent higher three family house, so yep. that number would change too. So how how are these they are equitable? Just fundamentally, because I think we have you know the same issue, different they're different situations that need to be discussed. I think we, as a group, need to have the argument. You're talking about the two models? Yeah, each one. Each of, each of them has sort of that arbitrary, a part of it that is, has an arbitrary cap applied or an arbitrary fee applied. How, what is our um, basis for making those? I would, I would make the argument, which is, uh, and it's sort of to build on what Dave was saying about the 27 page long, 27 long, page long version of this, which is, at some point, um, you have to give up exactness for simplicity. And, and so, at that moment we said, and the way we're going to get around this problem is we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to choose a number. And... Uh, they have, in, they're internally consistent. They don't contradict themselves within the model. Yeah. Um, they're just not perfect. And you draw a line in the sand. Yeah, and you yeah. Say, just this is worth. We are not going to let the, the 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 perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, which is, we've got a model that works. It's it's got a couple of warts on it, but uh, in our in our humble estimation. In order to achieve perfection, we'll create a system that's so darn complicated that it will it will make this look like kindergarten reading. <laughs> and we'll still have warts. And we'll still have warts. Yeah. And so. my perspective to this is that the, the Felton three model was is way out in front of the ERU model. That, that we're recommending, based on the vote, that we're recommending that the Felton model, Felton three. Or hydrologer, mm. hydrologer, hydrologer, hydrologer. No more felt <laughs> is is, <laughs> is the is the model of choice by the task force, and that we included the ERU, but the ERU was the result of the second vote uh, that didn't even include the felt three, so it's a distant second. So that this task force is really focusing on the hydraulic usage report. So why then sh why should we or why are we proposing? I think the answer to that is um, it, it helps to tease out uh, some of the points of contention that we had during our discussion, <coughs> um, and that and and that further we don't we're we're recommending this, but we don't have a monopoly on wisdom on this, and there is another model out there, as 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 Rick pointed out, you can't go through the literature and not find an ERU model. Oh, yeah. And right. it would be irresponsible of us to ignore that that's out there. Yep. So and it has some support. Yeah. There are parts of the and there, and there are people, and, and it got votes. I yeah, mean, it wasn't absolutely. it wasn't it wasn't ten to nothing. No. no. So. 
and as a matter of fact, they illustrate each other's strength. Exactly. 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 What I what I found the the language was simple and refined. Right. And we're at, you know, we're kind of at the extreme. So you know, I think it's a good option if we're going to have two to give them those two and let them see every other one. Too. I agree. I, I wrote some of my pros and cons based on them looking at the other models as well, not just at a hydraulic model, yeah. right? so that they can, you know, see see what's reasonable and fair. And, sure. um, so I think I think we're we're good in that we give them this two. sort of range. Yeah. We, and we're mm -hmm. we're speaking for them, and they they can live through the tug of war we live <laughs> Yeah. I just want to make sure we get those points. This right. Is, this is this has been a great discussion. I'm making some notes, but we're gonna have to add some of this yeah, into really a narrative. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that seems to be helpful to me is if we said how much we preferred one model versus the other. If we said there was seven votes out of ten or whatever the numbers were, but it's not very clear. You see both models and how much we preferred one from the other is not clear from the fee model consideration document I have in front of me. I'm with that, I mean, that's a, a good lead-in, because I was going to suggest that we just go through each section. And anybody who's reviewed this already that has comments, that we can talk about each section, what we agree with, don't agree with, want to add, so that whoever did that section can go back and revise it so we can get it to John. And are, we, we'll, are we ready to move on from a discussion of this? I don't know. Uh, that's... I am. I'm just curious. But are we agreed in principle, once we go through the sections and make our suggestions, that we should say what the vote was? I have that, actually, okay. as a comment. I, I started okay. writing that up, so yeah. I will propose yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, give them a score. Yeah, it's seven to four. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but... Yeah. yeah. I don't have a copy of my stuff with me. I came straight from... School, so. one, no, one he's talking question. about going, talking about going through the draft yeah. report, right? Yeah. yeah. And I can, um, Here's your introduction. Find it in. Oh, thank you Thanks. very much. Just, just Jim is always draft, prepared. Before we, before we put this away, I just want to ask. I know that we've been producing these these summary. Um, List. Yeah, I know. I'm going to keep just this one. In ju yeah. Just in the past two, we've added the estimated taxes, and I'm a, I'm a little concerned about about that. In that, it's it's certainly it's not complete, and um, I'm not sure what relevance it has to what our task is. Um, it's a good question. So so having property taxes is some sort of factor. Well, in this, I think is inappropriate. And I think we've been advised that too. So I'm I'm a little concerned that this column is even here. Well this is ne not necessarily going in the report. Okay. So but Chris but I'm no, not sure I how was, anybody I was else say, I, I was gonna say my too. recollection of the discussion was to get some sort of order of magnitude yeah. about what their various burden would right. be. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, under the various numbers, you know, scenarios for stormwater as compared to their normal taxes. But I agree with you. I don't think, I think it's out, a, out beyond the purposes of our discussion, I don't think it belongs there. Yeah, we shouldn't be comparing this to property taxes yeah. or property value. I don't think that's that's appropriate. Yeah. So I, I would I would hope that we don't include this in the in the Does draft. Anybody know how to take highlighting out? No, I I'd be with you on that. Okay. So we want to, we'll move on to the report. So, so I'll actually, I want to start off with uh, David's write-up, which I don't think we need to do any changes to it. I just want to think about where we're going to put that, maybe as a preface or, you know, in an appendix, um, the testimonial. I, I, it's, to me, it's, it sort of captured a lot of the... Uh, Heart and soul of what we did and belongs somewhere in there. I don't know where it belongs. What you wrote? Uh, I unfortunately only sent that to you, Dan. Oh, because I hadn't, yeah, I hadn't I seen it. it. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. Really? I, I, under the advice of my counsel, Mr. <laughs> well, see, it's a very heartfelt and thoughtful <laughs> account <laughs> of our <laughs> ten weeks together. It really is. I believe it. So we'll we'll. Get a copy and yeah. everybody, and you guys can read it. It perhaps should be a forward. 
Well, as I was saying, either four would preface whatever you want to call it, but it's, it is a personal introduction. Um, it's still got the highlighting yeah. on it. <laughs> Did you need me to send you a copy without the highlighting? It rained again. <laughs> yeah, and again. I noticed Emory sent it on. He didn't take it out. I just didn't know if anybody didn't know how. That's a good background. Okay, well, so if you know how, yeah. go ahead. I just, <laughs> the one you know. over <laughs> Okay, so everybody got the introduction. Mm -hmm. um, anybody had any comments? I'm happy to, to take notes as people. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can keep the master copy here. My only comment is perhaps a little more flowery and literary than most of our city documents, <laughs> but that's nothing. That's not bad in my book. That, that was Henry's contribution. No? <laughs> Do we want to add to this either? Um, the, you know, the definitions, or do we want to just reference definitions in, a, in a, an appendix? So yeah. I, I was thinking about under appendices adding the glossary. Right. So I, but I think we'll reference the glossary yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. In, the, in the intro. Um, I have also adding references to the EPA and Army Corps letters, just making a reference to those, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. with an appendix X. Dan, you, you said you're going to take... You're going to have a master on this. Yeah. You want anybody to back you up on that? If, sure. If, if John's going to write this. Absolutely. Be, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> not that I'm volunteering for that. I just want to make sure that John does. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like to come back to this after we've gone through the rest of it. If there's okay. <clears throat> there something that's missing that we need in the introduction. Oh, it doesn't come up all through the... Yeah. Well, the only thing I had... Um, that I added that was significant, significant was an intro that we're offering uh, a preferred, you know, as a result of all of our deliberations, we're offering a preferred model and an alternative for comparison uh, and just go a little bit into the, you know, how that process played out. We can do that in that section as well. It, it can go either place. Any other comments on intro? I don't know if we need all the part about the Northampton enjoys a wonderful location, but I'll nice. leave that up to you guys. It sounds nice. nice, but I don't know how big you want this package to get with all sorts of extra stuff in it. You One know? paragraph more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As it is, it's it's minus the appendixes. It's not going to be it's not going to be twenty pages. No. So, I think it's other than concise. All right, so principles. I'll start. I'll go ahead. Okay. No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Alice and I said I never talk about principles, and um, we just went back and forth about it, so we kind of thought that maybe this thought that maybe the statement of principles was really just sort of like the story of how we, we got to where we got. Um, in reading the rest of the report, I'm wondering if a lot of it isn't redundant, so I'm interested to hear about what you all think and if this is even the format that is helpful um, for this section. Um, and we didn't <clears throat> end up including <clears throat> things like credits and caps, even though that, well, so that's, so, yeah. I, I saw principles more as as general principles of what a stormwater fee is, rather than the specific arguments that are made that get very much uh, more in the in the two uh, mm -hmm. formulas. I, I thought it was bullet point, perfect, spot on. Where you know it will take away some of the anxiety of all the engineering documents that this is human speak. So as I read it, it was. Bang, 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 not bang, 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 but softly yeah. put yeah. so people could read it and get through it. I thought it was, yeah. So I like that. I like how it was framed very much. Yeah. Is, there, is there something in here, I, I'm not sure if I'm finding, about the underground systems themselves, the invisibleness of this? I, not really. I, I would like to just point out to, to the reader that a lot of the work that, that needs to be done is invisible. Um, 
I think that um, escapes people mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, and, and I think it's very, you know, to the point of, you know, the, <clears throat> the anticipated outrage. Um, because and I've stated this before, this is a reinvestment in things that we don't see a, a lot of this. So, so I'd like to just even one line to just to... Well, that certainly would fit after that first paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or in the introduction. Or in the intro. Yeah. Yeah, the either one, because I, oh, I added a part in the intro yeah, that yeah. wasn't there about this yeah. uh, things being over 100 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right in there, well, let's see, where was I? I remember doing it. Um, maybe a recap a little bit of territory. I was going to say, we've got great numbers on the miles of this and the numbers of this and the things that, I mean, yeah. people ought to understand the order, the, the magnitude yeah. of the yeah. form. I think yeah. that, that, that's a great point that you made. Maybe Does somebody want to write that up? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's you want to write it up? Terry just raised his hand. Yeah. Terry, do a paragraph for us. Yeah. yeah. Quite willing. It's, it's pretty much done. Age or paragraph. Right after paragraph. How about right after paragraph two on the intro? Yeah. That would yeah, be a good exactly. place to put it in, right <laughs> in there. That's, that's pretty much done in the, in the uh, uh, DPW report already uh, online. Uh, the CDM report? Uh, no, no. Under DPW stormwater or sanitary. How many catch basins, how many band holes, uh, yeah. uh, how many miles. Uh, I don't know if we got that included. I read it. It's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. And if it makes sense, we can, we can throw a summary in the appendix and just do a quick little executive paragraph summary for the write-up. That, that would work, too. Yeah. 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 And do we want to include the itemized sort of budgetary aspect or no? Is that... No. No, but if you get a number, what it would cost to replace the whole system? Just a it's a, it's a stunning amount. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of dollars. A third of a yeah. billion dollars. That would be a number we have. Yeah. I wouldn't include that. All right. Do you pay in lieu of taxes to the city based on that? Uh, yeah. Oh, the ERU just went up. <laughs> <laughs> Waste what it might have. It's a 400. <laughs> But yeah, something uh, dramatic. I think yeah. would be well. You know. But that's over a long period of time, and so it's you know. It's, it's a gift from our grandparents and our parents, our great grandparents. Well, we don't want to be scary about this. No, I don't We're think saying, no. Like, two no, but just the scope. Solve, yeah. Start solving. Well, I don't which know can, if I want to go. Which you periodically can. start solving yeah. the problems that are arising in the system. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think scale is important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think is well under one percent of the value of the property. And that we see a police station or a fire station, but we don't see a lot of what is planned to be done. Yeah, right. Mm. So I, I think that's the difference. Yeah. With what we're, we're talking about. That's valuation based on brand new. That's not new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, replacement. <laughs> So I'm going to look for a paragraph to put in after paragraph two in the yeah, intro. Yeah, okay. Okay. willing to help you. Okay. So the intro, you think that's... Yeah, I think, because the, the paragraph there talks about the city as infrastructure, much of it over 100 years old, to deal with runoff from stormwater and levees, to protect it from the Mill River and the Connecticut River, right there would be a perfect place to go into a description of what that infrastructure is. Yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. Outside. Okay, great. And then further down, um, okay, are we back in principles now? Yeah. yeah. Um, the third paragraph, um, I'm not, which is really just a sentence. Um, just my initial feeling was, is it just? It sounded like we are like we're followers, like you know, because other people have done it. We're going to do it. I don't know if we want to add some more explanation, or is that what the maybe that's what the rest of it is? You know, for the following reasons, because then you've got the next, yeah, the next paragraph. Yeah, so. 
the growing that joined a growing number of cities. Yeah, I like that. I like that better too. <coughs> okay. So it recommends joining. Great. I would actually even even uh, propose lengthening, adding to the end of that sentence. Uh, Say something about the reason we're doing it is to address the the, the, the major challenges that uh, the new regulations are going to you know present something like that just to drive home that this is this is really Part. something that we have to do for regulations what we have to do it yeah. for other reasons too yeah but the regulations are certainly part but that's uh, that's what the second paragraph okay. says yep you're right yeah. It's, it's a little redundant. Okay, never mind. Right. The last, the last paragraph, um, it goes in a lot of different directions. Yeah, yeah. So it just, I felt like you know, it sort of needed to be tightened up or, or <coughs> split up or something. The um, there was sort of the, there was a, how much if anything does the city charge for this runoff? I'm not sure if that was a question. Well, it's sort of, a, it is a run. It seems to me that it was the unfinished part of the conversation. That each one of these has been discussed and never came to any kind of conclusion. It never came to a vote. It never came sort of. So you want to make these into a bullet, like a bullet ties a list of like questions? I mean, so you have, you have an opening when the task force focused, it could not reach a consensus, you know, and then you have, you know, you know all of these are sort of examples of that first sentence. I would say that these are the issues that we worked with. Yeah, we Not found so much that we couldn't find consensus. I yeah. wouldn't say that. Just like, this, this is, these okay. were our discussion points. And so, so it focused on. And we could make it longer and talk about like what the discussion was about each of these. Yeah. Or just say we talked about it because then you go into it more in the fee model. Yeah, I think if you know if you get I mean, changing it to focus on. And then clean, you know, cleaned it up so that they're not in developing our models. These are the issues that we look at. Um, in, in this, can we say that I don't know if it's a principle or not, but we wanted to bring in the tax exempt properties as part of our our examination of, of options. If we allowed us to do that, is that a principle? Yes, and I think we did talk about. That. I think that's important. When, when, so why not an override? It says in the in the paragraph that spread equitably for residential, commercial, and tax exempt property. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. We did have a longer paragraph on that. Good. Sounded like you were beating them up. <laughs> <laughs> Just happened to come to occur. <laughs> we also, I mean, back to this. That the third paragraph, we had talked about, and, and we could do this or not, um, just if we should lay out the funding options, you know, like we could either do this with a general fund, we could pursue federal grants, or we could set up a fee. And the first two options didn't work for whatever reason, or, and so that's why we landed on number three, which a number of cities have already Done. So we could that add that. I mean, yeah. that that's an yeah, that would be huge. Yeah, that would be good. You know, why not? And so discussion of the other options that we that were considered. Mm -hmm. That's part of after paragraph three. Funding or as part of part paragraph of, three. Part of three. That paragraph three will then be the last sentence of the paragraph. <laughs> right. We don't need my folk. Before you go, David, I, just, I think this is excellent. I would, I would, I would write right below your name what you said inside mine. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I thank you, and I'm sorry about not sending it, but Dan, it wasn't public. Uh, I didn't know if it was transparent when you asked me to do it. He didn't do it in a public meeting, and I had Bob do a lot of it, so I appreciate the opportunity. It's great.
yesterday. All I did was transcribe what you had written. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have followed through. Thank you. Let's drill up a burger now. That is good. Personalized. Yeah, so it really is. Nicely. Yeah. And he's a converted skeptic. Yeah. I say that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I think he's a frustrated writer. <laughs> All right. Anything more on principles? It looks good. All things considered, for a first draft, we're pretty damn close yep. to. Uh, yeah, we're looking I was, good. I was really uh, happy when I saw it and read through everything. It's like this is not going to take a whole lot of effort to, to wrap up. Um, all right, the next section was the females. I'll just start on the pros and cons. Uh, this one's just sort of mostly cut and paste uh, for me. Um, I may have reworded some of these um, and it was just uh, throw everything out there and just let the committee decide what we want to include or uh, add to it um, but I think they're all fairly accurate I'm not sure when the, the fifth pro offers more equity than flat or tier fee system for non resident properties I don't know why that's necessarily the case there are certainly one can imagine a tiered system where residential properties paid more. Yeah. yeah it, that it, is absolutely it, it, a cut. Not necessarily the case. So, I, I, I wasn't quite clear right, on that either. Right. I could see how it might be yeah. seen. See, it can be, could be, but could be. isn't necessarily so. Isn't necessarily so. Well, that one should come out, it seems to me. Okay. Um, all right. Second. Um, oh, you have a lot more than have this one. Yep. Which is a lines percentage of total fee with percentage of impervious. Yeah, I was actually going to add accurately a lines. It's not, well, them. it's just based on. It's based purely on impervious, and so there's uh, alignment isn't a goal necessarily. It's a result. It's just a result. Uh, it is, you know, it, since it's based entirely on impervious, it's based entirely on impervious. So that could be restated somehow. I mean, I, I, I sort of in looking at the pros for hydraulic um, the first one the, the shift in burden I know we discussed this a little bit Dan um, you know, that, that also references property taxes yes which I again feel uncomfortable about doing um, so the accurately aligns percentage um, or however we might stay that is uh, just to address that difference between the, the models, that if we're, if we're going to uh, present this information to the city council, they should know that um, the total percentage of impervious is what your fee would be. So in my mind, if there's um, 100 people and 17% own 50% of the impervious surface, Paying for fifty percent of the fee makes sense from those seventeen people. But th your assumption with that is that the impervious surface is all that matters. Well, that, and that's, that's true. And that's that's true. And that's sort of why the ERU model is, in, is inherently not fair and is not the preferred model. I mean, that's sort of the point. Either we make that point or we don't make the point. That's one of those points that needs to be made. The other, the other the, regarding the taxes, I, I don't have an issue with pulling it out or leaving it in either way um, but it is I think it has some relevance to you know there is property value is one of the is one of the things that I thought was an important aspect of the model and, and particularly with flood control so you know if you're looking entirely based on cost of managing, um, managing, preventing, or treating runoff off, off of a property, you're primarily focusing on impervious and you can pretty much leave it at that. When we start looking at values, there's no way but to look at property value and 
the tax associated with it, which those are directly related. I could just easily say that it's you know that it's not tax burden. It aligns it with property values. Same same problem, I think. Well, but that's I mean fundamentally that's one of the things I think that makes the ERU model or any of the strictly impervious models fundamentally unfair. So and so that's well. My second point was that of those. 83 people, or 87, or the, the, the 17, if there is a all bets off flood, then you know each of those people lose 100%. So the value of that property is irrelevant, I, I believe. So I have a, I have a problem with that. Um, <clears throat> I want to come back to the, 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 the tax issue in a second, but dealing with the pros issue, uh, the way I would approach this is I'm arguing for this model. That's, that's what I'm doing. And so what I would say is uh, not necessarily get into the percentage issue, although I see where you're coming from. What I would say is, is that um, it's an argument I made in the past, which is if, you, if you're going to do something that looks like a user fee, then impervious is the way you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So if, yeah. If, 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 if we're all going to be responsible for our runoff, the way we are based on our water usage and our sewer usage, impervious is the model. And just and that's the you know that and you don't I don't have to fully believe it to make the argument. Right. But that would be that, that would be an argument. that would be the argument I would make, which that's is this, this is this is based on what 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 I contribute to the problem. Because they'll see the numbers, they'll see those mm -hmm. those percentages. Yeah. Which is discounting pervious. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Which, right. Which is not pervious; it's less impervious. Right, but I'm I'm not I don't have to listen to that argument as I argue, <laughs> as I argue for what I want. Yeah. Sure. But do we need both of those points? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying that. Yeah, that that. No, would be I mean, all fees are driven by equal unit based on the amount of the average impervious surface single family home. I guess it, it it just sort of builds on it a little bit. Which they is, seem pretty yeah. duplicative. I mean, it seems yeah. to me that the first three pros are say essentially the same thing. It is easy to explain and understand, but the number one and number two are very similar in their arguments. Oh, I, on, the, on the pros. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the taxation issue uh -huh. as opposed to... Uh, well, on the taxation issue, as, as far as including that column uh, or not including it, and I do understand your point about property value. The problem I have with presenting that piece of information is that it's so incomplete that I don't know that it really contributes anything sure. anything to the chart. Um, for instance, we wouldn't be able to fill in the, that, those boxes for a single family ha fa yeah. family residence. The the, the the range of property taxes on a single family residence in this community has got to be yeah. just just yeah, it's it's wow. it's yeah. crazy. So if you can't fill in, if you if you can only fill in a third of the boxes, I'm not really sure what it does for us. No, I, and I don't. I don't think we need to provide that. I'm talking sort of in the aggregate. Okay. So when we look at the fees in the aggregate, any of the models, really the only models that don't exactly mirror the impervious surfaces are the Reckon Colhane model and my model. Yeah. Because it brings in something else. And it would in both of those models end up shifting some of the fee burden from commercial mm -hmm. and maybe even some of the other to, re to residential. And I got it and I agree with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate by saying that if I was a disciple of the ERU yeah. model, I would ignore what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, mean, I know. I, I want to know whether or not we, we have to, These are, we're presenting both separately. We, mm -hmm. we you know, what do we present in the hydraulic acreage model? Do we say it or don't we say it? That's all I'm saying. And we're not talking about how the tax credit goes with ERU. Is do we want to say anything? And Rick is saying we shouldn't. And that's that's fine. I don't know if we need to decide as a group whether we shouldn't. And if not, then, then why the hell are we? You know, what is, what is, what are the reasons? Because I don't know if I have enough. I only have, you know, three of each. And there are 17 under the ERU. So, um, 
avoids having uh, to collect comprehensive info on residential properties isn't doesn't isn't tied into 80 percent of the value. That's not why you need to collect comprehensive info. It's because there are so many of them. Which one are we talking about? You're, I'm talking about the, the fourth pro. The fourth pro or ERU. avoids having to collect comprehensive info on residential properties, which typically comprise more than 80 percent of the value. Seems like apples and oranges. The reason that you you don't want to collect comprehensive info is because there's so many of them. You got different text on right. right. That was also a no. That's uh, this based on, the on other. an ERU recommendation. Well, well keep going. No, by doing a, I mean, by doing anything, it, it applies to both. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's so the this, same. That one applies to yeah. all of them. There you go. But by, not to the yeah. other mod. By doing a simplified. We really what it should say is, is avoids collection of extensive data on various surfaces and factors prior to adopting approach for residential properties. And will be, will be relatively that. inexpensive to implement, therefore. That is Probably. a pro. Um, and I, I'm, I'm making that, I'm assuming that that's going to be um, self-evident. Um, uh, at the last meeting, I think Jim told us that it would you know, there were no obstacles to implementing this. Cost, that's another factor. You know, if there's no, if cost isn't a problem, then we can do anything. Well, my feeling is if it costs, let's just pick, I'm going to pick the numbers out of the air, but it costs $25,000 to set up the ERU model. It costs $100,000 to set up the hydraulic model. We should not care about that difference over a long term and raising $2 million a year. We really want to find what we think is a fair way. And if it, if they were equally fair, then the cheap one would be better. But I don't necessarily think that's so. I think that the cost argument is so maybe we is not a particularly that. compelling argument. So maybe point that out or just... Mm -hmm. you could, you're certainly welcome to say it would be relatively inexpensive to implement. I'm fine with what anybody else thinks on that. I, I want to go back to the hydraulic acreage one for a minute. When you, when we started looking at the figures, did I misunderstand you, or did you say you were able to get the figures for the single family, all those figures? They exist already. They do. So in your cons, where you say um, precise measurement, measurement of residential properties may not be worth the effort, and generally require extensive information gathering, you've already got the information. So those really aren't cons, are they? Until today. So, <laughs> and that just came in today, okay. that information. So I had no idea. Okay, okay but I'm saying those can come off. Okay. Those can come off here as Although, cons. They don't really exist anymore right. as cons, right? What is the quality of that data? And do, would... That's a good question. Yeah. It, it needs to get better. Okay. Oh. It's, is that the uh, three types of surfaces for each residential property? It has, yeah, it has building... And total impervious and subtract the, the two to get, you know, the separate for building and non-building and then impervious. Man. Right. So it's all, it's all there. For every house. For every property. That's, I don't know. If that's what we've had the information. That's how we've been calculating the fees all along. Would you see any disputes with, like, well, this ground isn't as compacted as that ground. And does that get, does that open up those kind of disputes? Between one homeowner and another homeowner, and, and, and the, the, the formula figures that their backyard is soggy, so it's one surface, and the front yard is compacted, and all. Well, it's a big city. We, you know, I would I would anticipate no matter what model you choose, <laughs> there would be some people in there. Yeah, I. What, what, yeah. what the calculation? Is. I the already models know. depend very much on that factor. That's yeah, we're not differentiating. Right. They don't yeah, really make any difference. Right. There's no previous differentiation. I'm just thinking if the council sees sees that and says, well, if we can do it, let's do it instead of averaging for that. If we're going to do this, you know, we're going to break down these numbers, let's break down the numbers. We, we already have the numbers for building size, for structure size. That's already known yeah. on the cards. I, mean, I just think it's it's a lot simpler. To, you know, the, the basis, what, we, what we're average. both arguing for, and I think maybe we, what we do, we need to state this, that it doesn't really matter the method. We really want it just to simplify billing and the whole approach is we want to have, an, you know, use an average rate. Whatever it is, whatever model is ultimately used, using an average rate, especially because it's, you know, it's less than, less than $200 and it's, you know, you start to quibble yeah. over tens of dollars. So we should add that to your section. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, that we want an average. Yeah, we want to use average. 
values for single, two family, and three family. Yeah. Yeah, I think Bob's point is is correct too. If the startup cost is manageable between each one, the recurring cost we need to we need to consider too. As far as overhead, a lot of the literature I've read. When you get into complicated systems, that the overhead maintains yeah. a certain level above. So I don't think that would be the case with either of these, either your system or hydraulic acreage system. Yeah. Could you, just for me, could you, uh, what's the principle, what you want to add to the principle? That, um, that we're going to use an average residential property. We're going to determine an average a fee that is an, that is based on average, whatever it is, because it's one's a VRU and one's right. this hydraulic acreage, but based on an average for the class of property. Because there are so many of them. Because there's yeah, yeah, and because of the difficulties cost with and the cost and complexity yeah. of maintaining the data uh, ongoing, all, ongoing, updating, all of that. Uh, ongoing basis. Now the only problem with that is to what you know it makes it a lot more difficult. For someone to get credits or incentives specific to their property. Yeah. Well, maybe we should talk about that when we get to that part. But my, my response to that would be is credits and incentives are based are based on actions you undertake, irrelevant, separate from what it is that, where you live, what you do. Okay. So. So it'd be more like an uh, an item. Like unit price, so you put a rain barrel and you get this, you put in 10, you get yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, or or if you reduce your output by X percent, you do this, okay. or that kind of thing. Yeah. And 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 this goes back to a discussion we had um, the last go-around where, where we were looking at using um, credits as a way to get around, the, I think, the, the, the fee. The fee. And just do what we're going to do on fees and superimpose credits on top of it. Now, is that another principle? And so I think it and maybe needs to be a maybe, principle. Yeah. State but there would be a cap on on credits. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody I mean and I, I put that in the language which yeah. is everybody pays. You can't you can't yeah. credit your yeah. way out of this. Yeah. Um but but I do think that uh, the, the idea that because the, in, in 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 theory our, you know, our our, our, our our city parents could argue, could vote not, could decide not to include credits. Yeah. So we don't want a fee structure that that that, that, that counts on it. Yeah. So in the principles, you want to add something about credit exemption. I, I don't know if it belongs in principles or not, but but. Uh, well, he, he has it written up. Yeah, I've got it. It's in the, it basically it says you can't. Well, we all agree to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can reference, you know, discuss further in section. Either way, or I'll just write the sentence and send it to you. Or you can pull it right out of there. But I think yeah. I think it's not the specifics. Because yours is pretty specific. Mm -hmm. I think it's, the, it's really the, broad, the broader fundamental that everybody's going to pay, and you can't use credits to not pay. Right. And that, mm -hmm. that a determination needs to be made on an appropriate level of, sort of credit and incentives. That's not our decision, because we're not recommending that right. in your section either. We're just providing a lot of options. And but that's a one line. That is, you know, yeah. two sets, but that yeah. absolutely needs to be there. Okay. Kind of okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The credits. This, uh, you know, everyone pays, and that credits can't, credits or incentives will not, cannot be used to eliminate. Uh, or totally should not, to to should not be not used to totally, totally eliminate. eliminate. It. Yeah. Yeah, you say that as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're. <clears throat> Uh, including in, in the principles determining this fee based on averages, mm -hmm. and then the uh, everyone pays mm -hmm. and credits. I'm trying to write this down. The credits are. Oh, you can't credit. You can't yeah. credit your way out of out of paying. Totally. Well, yeah. that if, if we're jumping around. So then, are yeah. we saying in our principles that we agree to credit? No. I would, okay. No, I just I say credits or, or other incentives can't be used to... So that's not a principle? That the task force highly recommends credits? I don't think that's a principle. We recommend it. They recommend yeah. it. Yeah. Not a principle. Yeah. Okay. So that, in, in the fee models considered, um, I, I see that you settled on the point seven. As a coefficient, but then decided that no credits would be applied for that for the point system. 
for that part of it. So yeah. that eliminates credits for that? For previous services? For non building purpose services. No credits for driveways, no credits for parking lots, no credits. They have no role in the formula. Partly, right? Because partly it's because you, you know, the range is 0.7 to 0.95. We're using the low end of the range. <coughs> partly because building code it continuously increases to make for people to include those um, provisions in their in their parking lots. There's more and more stormwater controls being mandated. Not so much with buildings, you know, what do you do with your runoff? You know, there's no mandate for green roofs, there's no mandate for rain barrels, there's no mandate to kick in all your, your But there's a limit on the size of the percentage of your lot. You can't build on more than the permit allows. Yeah, apparently it's like 50, 40 percent. You can't. 50 percent. You want some certain needs. Uh, you so need that, 50 percent open space. And so that's that, new. That's new, not existing parking lots. So. So that so. Same. I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I, you know, you can say that there's no, there are no building. But the planning department is continually pushing down that number. They want you to Open build, space. be able to build on a smaller and smaller yeah. lot. Really? Build, buildings yeah. are considered impervious. So if you're building a new, you know, Leo Toyota built a brand, brand new building down on King Street, <coughs> the footprint of that building is considered impervious and needs to be mitigated as part of their planning board approval. Right. But for resident, yeah. mostly residential, which is what we're really talking about, uh, you know, the city policy is really opposite. The city is saying build more impervious, you know, you can build more impervious surface on less open, preserve less open space. I, I don't think that's quite accurate of that, Alex. I think what the city is saying is if based on the zoning we have today, you could not rebuild many neighborhoods in Ward 3. The new zoning will be more similar. So if Ward 3 were to burn down, people could rebuild similar to what's there now. I agree, it's denser, but it's not saying we want to have more dense development our, than our zone. It's saying we want to have more dense development than our zoning code allows, but our zoning code allowed is now does not reflect the facts on the ground. Well, that's a you know that's a planning board argument. I, well, know, I think it's true. true. I mean, it's true. <laughs> it's not true. You, you know, there well, are more three. Well, yeah, I'm not sure yeah. this is that, 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 yeah, that's, right. Right. that's right. It's a good discussion. Yeah. So. But let me, let we me say one We can change this, but the thought process was that buildings right. were using, you know, 95% or, you know, 100 for whatever purpose, and that your your caps and credits would be applied towards, and this is, we really didn't discuss it, I kind of wrote it up, it's for Just discussion, the yes. that would be, the, that would be a natural cap to the amount of credit that you could, add, that you could get would be whatever your building contribution is. That would be the most that you could get as, as a credit. I don't know, I mean, we could have it be a lot less, but in the, you know, if we say that there's no credit for building. doing stuff with your parking lots, because it's already being built into the fee, now I don't know, does that just incentivize people doing things with their parking lots? Maybe it does. I'm not sure what people would do with their parking lots to, you know, I mean, maybe Jim, Doug, or Terry, or Ned could talk about whether or not this is a completely flawed uh, approach. I was, this. I, I was just at a, I was just at a seminar this, today um, that that actually spoke pretty much directly to that, and they they encourage people to do things with their parking lots, and they have specific design design models for um, uh, I can't remember what they call them, but they're bio whatever bio swales bio, bio, bio swales and that kind of thing. Where they, you know, they target the runoff into a specific thing, and it basically yeah. disappears. Uh, it's actually pretty fascinating stuff. But, but uh, so I wouldn't. I, I again, I, I don't. When I when I started working on this, I never envisioned that the credits would would be biased towards the u use of the land. They would they would reflect improvements you you made to the property that mitigated the contribution that your property. Uh, made to the public system, to the public system. Beyond what's required by permit? I, I don't do that. Uh, there are, in fact, when I read the CDM report over the weekend, they actually specifically say they would only reward you if you go beyond the permit. 
what happens if you do something that's under the permit, and but you're not required to do it because it's a retrofit? You get nothing for that? No, I can't go with that. Explain that again. Well, let's let's say let's say permitting it permitting only applies to major rehabilitations or new construction. Right. Okay. Yep. So if I own my 150 year old house and I put in a rain garden, I which is not what I'd be, it's below what I would be required to do if I was building a new house. Okay. I, I'm, I get no credit for that? No, nah, I can't, can't go with that. Can't go with that. Uh, okay. I, I think... I'm thinking I, about new construction. Yeah, okay, well, and that's, I, my feeling is, is that, and, and again, the CDM report makes that argument, which is right. you only get credit for what you do above and beyond. My feeling is, is that anything that you do to alleviate the pressure on the system is worthy of, of, of credit. I hear you. I hear Beyond you. what's required? Nope. Anything you do. One rain barrel. But why? I don't get your argument. Why you add the, the building permit doesn't, it's true, doesn't make you retrofit your old house. Right. Uh, so uh, you're going beyond what's required, and you should get a credit. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but yeah. I, but that's what yeah. he's saying. But yeah, but, but I also think you should get a credit if you don't go but what's beyond by it. I mean even if you do only what's required, I think you should still get a credit. So if you get a building permit yeah. that requires a certain amount of things, right. that's that's what you get. You get that building permit. Right. You have to do those things. Right. You're suggesting that you should get an additional credit besides the permit itself to build mm -hmm. in the stormwater. The permit is a is a credit of sorts. I mean, you're getting permission to build, so that's a requirement of the permit. And I don't believe that it should. I, we disagree on this. Yes, I, I don't believe that what's already required deserves further credit. I don't. So well, then we should probably discuss it before I rewrite that yeah. chapter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just think, feel you know, yeah. and I could be convinced yeah. otherwise. But to me, it seems like they have to do it anyway. They have to do it anyways. There is no credit for that. That's mm -hmm. what they have to do. If they want to go beyond, and we've discussed this, you could always do more, then you can get credit for that. But what's required in a permit, I don't believe should be given any kind of credit. But I think that when we had this discussion in the, in the past, the point was raised that let's say, let's say permit requires me to do this, okay, whatever this threshold <laughs> is, okay? Yeah. This is permit, okay? And... I do that because I'm required to. I get nothing for doing it. You get to build. You get that property. You develop. Yeah. And I obviously, guess. you think that that's, that's you, a you come you come to it from a different perspective I do. than I do. I do. Um, so, but conversely, if a guy over here who's not getting a permit does even this, they end up in a more beneficial position with regard to their fee on an existing. Yeah, on an existing. Yeah. Then. And and this and this is a recurring benefit in some cases, where as long as this system is in place and it's and it's keeping fifty percent from mm -hmm. the stormwater going into the system every time there's a major event, uh, I get this benefit over and over and over again each year when I reapply for. It does seem a bit unfair. Yeah. That by piecemeal along yeah. the way we've sort of been addressing this big issue. Right. We're now addressing by. You know the permitting process. You got to do it this way, yeah. and I and I get that. That it seems unfair. You've required me to do that on new building, <coughs> but that's that's just the way that we do it. Now we're starting something new. I don't think you can. I you can't get a second bite of that. You know you can't get credit for what you've already been required to do. And I don't know how else to say it. It's, I I ask you this, Chris. Have you looked at the building permits to see? what they are now requiring? I have not done that. Have you? No, I haven't. That may be a good idea to take a look and see what they're requiring for a one-acre plot or a two-acre plot to build up. Okay. MJ was telling me that, that the stuff that they're required to do with habitat houses is actually pretty onerous. Oh, pretty yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, they they built habitat houses in <coughs> their retention pond and Right. You know, right. Those kinds of things that have to be maintained. I think you have to look at that. Yeah. I mean, I can see, I can see the point. Mm -hmm. I, if you're building a habitat house and you do all this extra 
extra work. Um, you know, you want to acknowledge that. But I think it's a lost opportunity for us to kind of um, uh, improve behavior mm -hmm. um, by, you know, eliminating those credits. Um, well, here's another way to look at it. The permit is a one-time fee. Yep. Okay. Depending on what type of credit, it goes back to what I was saying here, depending on what type of credit program you adopt, this could be a recurring benefit each time you pay your bill. So over the next 50 years, and, and you're balancing that one-time fee against the, the reduced impact, the, the smaller footprint that I'm having on the stormwater system moving forward, and I have to maintain it and keep it up to a certain municipal standard throughout the period of time for, for it to qualify. That's, that's another good point. The, the monitoring and the follow-up yeah. on this is dubious at well, best. Yeah, that's right one now. of the things that, that once this is developed and once this fee goes in and once they start, there's people going to have to be hired that are going to have to maintain this thing. Yeah. Yes. And th these are going to be inspector-type people that are going out through the city, looking at those pieces that are being put in and seeing that they're maintained. They're working and functioning. Yeah. I know yeah. Dan mentioned yeah. the If you get a credit of... for 15 years each, and each year, and in year five it's not working, if somebody's not out there looking at right. it, you know, Absolutely. we're not doing our job. Yeah. Well, the city of Northampton's deferred all this maintenance. You can fully expect private companies that are deferring maintenance on these things too. I know you mentioned Oh, we know it right now. Cost. I mean, we can see it. Right. And it's flushing right into a city system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's... Alright. We're, just a quick time check, we have 20 minutes. Let's, so we're talking about credits. The initial thing was that credits were not going to be... I, I'm, I just read through, I don't see where, I think I took it out. I don't see the credits not being... Uh, available for uh, you know the non-building impervious areas. I don't want to say anything either way. We're talking. It's really we could spend a whole other task force talking about credits and how to do credits. I think we all you know we're agreeing that credits are going to you know are sort of a recommended thing that mm -hmm. needs to be worked out. I think we need to move, move past this. Yeah, yeah. And, and and just to go back to that, I'm going to do some more work on this because I do I do want to I want to hone to the best of my ability. But one of the things that I said is that. You know, if you take on a program that looks like the Northeast Ohio program, Northampton isn't going to do that. Somebody, they're going to have to hire somebody to come in and do it. I, want to do, I do want to add something about inspections and recertification and that that's an additional yes. cost. I definitely need to add a paragraph along those lines. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I do want to look at the, at the building permits. But I think we can move on from there. I don't want to think about that. I think this is great. Uh, your, whole, your whole thing on... on uh, other considerations. I'm glad to sort this out, though. Yeah. In my mm -hmm. own head, because I think that's gonna that's gonna come up. I just want to go back to the fee model since it's not quite finished. Yeah, sorry, I'm no, not yeah. at all. Right. And yeah, so I my know. suggestion is that that there are pros and cons, certainly in uh, Rick's piece, which aren't really pros or cons. I mean, you're right that. If we set up this fee, there can be educational opportunities. That would be true for whatever model is established, for instance. So it seems to me worthwhile sorting down the list and making sure that we don't say things that would be true for any model and happen to be true for this one. Uh, the other thing I want to say is I think the place that the comments about the vote should go is right at the top of the second page. After considerable discussion, the task force said to present one preferred an alternate model to the city council for consideration by a vote of whatever it was for whatever it was. That's what I, I had put that in. And that's where that should be, it seems yeah. to me. Are, are, we, are we still on the pros for the ERU? Well, can I, let's, can we, just so we're bouncing around a lot, can we, let's go, like, page one. Okay. Anything on page one of oh, the few models? Well, no, there's really a little typos. Idea. I don't know if you want to give me some typos. Yeah, well, but we do have to talk about how we're going to do that at some point. <clears throat> What's typos the and things? Editing. 
John's going to do that. John's going to format it, get all the single <laughs> That's right. He's going to watch do that. Yeah, we're not volunteering him. But yeah, and then he, he took a vacation. He raised his yes. hand. <laughs> all right, page two. We're going to add that up at the top. Anything else in this page two section? That and I, 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 and there should be more than just the one sentence. I mean, you should, you should talk a, a little bit more about the nature of the vote we had. <clears throat> but it should be clear what, what the numbers were. I, yeah, I, I have yeah. Okay. Page two of the of the models, Dan. That what we're talking about. Yeah. So where well, you say preferred model, you're talking about emphasizing that. Whether I don't know what the vote was. I have task force voted on several models with seven out of ten task force members supporting the hydraulic acreage model. Yeah. Okay. That was nothing wrong with that. That was what it was. The minutes. Okay. The minutes mm -hmm. indicated six. Um, Henry gave me his vote beforehand. He wasn't here, but he sent by email. I support the. So. And, and just to be clear, the, well, that doesn't that's mean the other not in the three votes were for Rick's model. That's right. Mm -hmm. They we weren't. Not, they we were not. not. Rank these. When the first vote, we, we, there were three candidates. No, and I, I think you could follow up your statement with, and the committee decided that two models should be forwarded, mm -hmm. and they're Took the second vote. We don't have to talk about the second vote. Okay. okay. You know, and it was the decision of the committee that the two models should be forwarded in this model and this one. I think that was your name. That two, that two be forwarded. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first pro I'd like to see stricken. Or somehow re reworded, um, if you if you want to, you know, point out that it that it um, varies from the ratio of property taxes. Um, but shifting a burden is sort of a red herring to me in this. I agree. <clears throat> It's actually charged. It's sort of charged language. Yeah. So you can I'm, make the same point with more, with more neutral language. I'm not sure. And I guess so. The question is, do we want to make the point or not about making any kind of comparison to property values and property taxes or not? I know fundamentally, you can't a uh, uh, fee cannot be assessed in the same way that you would. You know, can't be based on property value. However. When we're looking at fair and equitable, what are the you know we have is that a measure that is that is something that we want to look at is is it is somewhat? I think I think it might go well in um, stating it, just making it clear that this model does uh, assign the fee. Um, in percentages, like our, our chart has, yep. and without charging the language, let the, let the just, just leave it out. figure it out. Yep. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty State clear. The facts. So, um, so eliminate yeah. the first sentence. The hydraulic acreage model results in residential properties contributing approximately 57% of the total fee, with because it's it dropped down from 62 once we went through and did the average. Right. With the remaining 43% from commercial and blah, 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 the other fee models, uh, including the alternate ERU model, come in below, resulting in residential properties contributing. Boom. And then I, whether or not we want to include the last sentence about property taxes, I don't know. I just, I, it's I don't like involving property taxes at all. I don't know okay. how anybody else feels. I don't I have an issue either way. It just it somehow seemed <clears throat> like a reasonable... Because this, even though we're trying to make this a fee, it's something that people absolutely really have very little control over, and it really is a t it's more of a tax than it is a fee, and that's really the bottom line. It's I, it, it, you know, as soon as you start trying to do it based on something concrete like impervious, then it really becomes. Wait, where are we here? Top of page. 
three. Oh, we're not in the pros and cons. Yeah. Right? Okay, got it. Well, we got it back. Yeah, all right. Because it's the same language, but he's saying it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that commercial property owners will appreciate the fact we've come up with a formula which is fairer to them. Um, we, we maybe you know that's not the wasn't the basis of how we figured it out, but if we come up with the the formula that's not fair to commercial property owners, they'll be very unhappy. Yes. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be unhappy regardless. Yeah. Well, but fair is just a, is a loaded word. That's yeah, right. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. right. So, we'll just state the facts. We'll leave, we'll leave it yeah. out. All right. That's right. So that means that then goes to the pros. That eliminates the first pro. Um, well, what about the first two kinds? Do you still want to leave those in there, or do you want to take them out? The first two kinds. I think it's bad. Uh, you say you have the... I know. It, that's kind of been eliminated. Um, well, except that Doug indicated that he thought he thought that the numbers might be soft. So maybe we want to... Um, I'm going to say for residential... Don't those numbers need to be maintained, though? I mean, it's going to be a lot of... Maybe take money. the first one out and leave the second one? A lot of that's taken care of by using the averages that Dana discussed before. And that's what number two con oh, says. Yeah. Detrimental to this particular method. Why is the second one a pro? It's been used in. It's it, the second one should probably be a pro, not a con. No, no. I mean, it, it's a pro. Hydraulic acreage models used in other municipalities, so it's not as common as the EIU or other pre. Just that it's been used. Yeah. It's, okay. It doesn't have to be there. It was sort of counterbalancing, trying to counterbalance. Are you including anything in the uh, appendix, any other, I know Boulder, Colorado, use in that type of thing? Is that no, we could. I think it might be helpful to could. You know, at least have an example, um, just a suggestion, as we're, as we're at this point. Because um, it does support your pro on here, too. Because it's not... Unheard of. Yeah. It's, it's a model that's it's used. It's, it's rare, but you know. But is it, is it getting less rare? What would be an interesting ads? They're all getting probably a little less rare. Moving, you know, getting more utilities. Do we want to include that as an appendix? What's what's the consensus? We want to reference some, you know, because there's a give them a reference. There's a paper or you know, two page like a little case study on. Uh, which is the hydraulic acreage model. Couldn't hurt. Okay. Yeah. I think we want to do the same for, for ERU. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't find one with undeveloped land. Okay. So, I mean, there are a million of them. Well, I would be able to find one with arbitrary <laughs> cap on acreage. So. Mm -hmm. so, some of the pros and cons definitely repeat on both. So, I, okay. I'm not sure, I mean, to the extent. I'm not sure that this is, I, I, I'm conscious of the time going by, so, but such models are probably the most equitable. This is, again, a value judgment. It seems like the, such models are the most, most accurately determine the amount of storm water running off the site. It was a cut phase. Okay. So I think that that's more accurate. It's, they attempt to more accurately determine. I, and that's there's no arguing with that. Yeah. 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 And that's a that's a pro for. That's for and that's me. the main reason I'm voting. Do we want to repeat pros and cons that are relevant to both? Or do we want to even have pros and cons at all? Are the pros and cons something for somebody else to determine? I expect the, the, the pros list to get pared down on, on, mm. on this one. I just kind of put things out there that, that showed up. The, <clears throat> the tiered approach doesn't really, the only tiered part is one, two, and three family houses. And it may get confusing. 
Yeah, so, that's a good point. So I might... I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> Tiered residential structures. A few were born that way. Right? We, we could take the, 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 tiered, uh, the tiered pros out. Um, I don't know if it even has any you know, relevance to political support. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Family, as opposed to just you know every house basis. Yeah. So we could eliminate those two. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other ones I, I think are pretty good pros. I really like the one about the educational focus. Um, Seems to me that's true about whatever plan we come up with. As long as there's a stormwater fee, the money could be used for well, education. The point that Rick's making is that it's um, because you're not focusing on the intricacies of the fee structure, you might have more time it's when it, yeah. to just talk about the problem that the city faces as opposed to trying to explain the model. That being said, it's not that simple. The ERU concept, you know, you're going to go to a, a commercial property and say, yeah, well, you mean, your whole thing is based on, a, on uh, this ERU, which is a, res which is a single family house. They're going to be like, this isn't a house. Yeah, how is that relevant? <laughs> yeah. So, this is a parking lot. And it's that it shows up as a con. You have ERU concept initially difficult for some repairs to understand, and then it shows up. Here is being easy to explain or understand. I'm not sure which one of those you want to include. Uh, well, I would keep the, I would like to keep the, um, the one that mentions the focus on the intricacies in that the majority of people who are going to be paying attention to this are residential property owners. So that education is really mostly for them. So, um, you know, in my mind, ERU really frees up the space to, to allow that education to take place. You know, we're going, I, I'm still trying to figure out the hydraulic model. So, you know, that's going to take a lot of education, time, and effort in itself. So that's the point of, of that pro. Um, so easy to explain and understand is contradicted by the ERU concept is initially difficult for some people to some some repairs so we could you know eliminate both of those um, at the bottom of the cons list and it'd be easy to explain and understand part although it is uh, i think pretty easy to explain and understand so I, I think that's a pro the other comment i have is the final pro which is allow public an opportunity to use the concept of a simple stormwater fee prior to building and refinements when's the last time you saw the city move from a simple structure to a more complex structure. Yeah. I mean, I understand the argument, right. but it's simply not going to happen. Zoning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I would say that one should come out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine where the, the process would begin to complicate this thing right. if we put it in place. It was a cut and paste. Right. Um, I, I can see how it, it might be a pro, but I'm, I'm fine with it coming out, too. So we're taking out the last three I've got so far knocked out, and he offers more equity than the flat fee. What about a lot avoids having to collect comprehensive info? And I guess that could be true. Um, on both, the, both of the models have that. On the yeah. residential one, so yeah. we can take that one out, too. Or we can leave it. Or we can just say it for both of them. You can make the same argument for both. Why don't you do that? Yeah. Yeah, that's better, so we can keep the pros in there. We know there are some pros to our recommendations. <laughs> now, the, the vulnerability to legal challenges is contradicted as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure we actually have enough information on that, and so much has changed. I think we should stay away from that. I think we should I too. totally think mm -hmm. we should stop. Yeah. I was concerned about that thread in the emails, just to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. The, Vulnerabilities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's for lawyers to decide. That's yeah. exactly right. If it can be challenged, somebody will challenge it. Would you say something similar in your pros? Absolutely. Yeah, it should come out there. Okay. No, I think Alex corrected that in that it is it attempts to be the most accurate. Yeah. You know, maybe not legally defensible, but I would keep in that it attempts to be the most accurate. 
I think that's a pro. Hmm. It's, it's basic pro. Yeah. Huh? It's it's basic pro. It's it's basic pro. Yeah. Just, just to clarify, you know, the ERU method is actually very accurate. So I, I just need to point that out. It's, <laughs> right, right, right. It's, you know, it's a, there's, I think there, there's, a, you know, it's just that it's based on a uh, very defined part of the property, but it's completely accurate. It's as accurate as any other model. Just that with the hydraulic acreage model, you're just looking at things a little differently and assigning different values. It's like it, 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 you know, it actually, it, we're using some value judgments to try and make it more fair and equitable. But yeah, yeah. it's still, the both of them are based entirely on, on numbers that we can get from GIS and from tax, you know, from tax lists. So there's really, there, you have to be really careful. Your second model and the ERU two model almost mirrored each other. And accurate might not be the right word. So the ERU model is simple, and your model is complex. That's exactly Both attempt to achieve accuracy through different approaches. Refined, simple, and yeah. refined is the right. terminology. So, right. if you but you're not if you use the uh, ERU if you just measure. In permeable surface, you're not accurately measuring the runoff from the That's property. But you are, but you're accurately measuring the what that one part. What you right. measure right. is that. Right. right. But what you want to measure <laughs> is the water running out the property. What you want to do is get people comfortable with paying a fee. You know, the the, the actual measurements right. are, are leading up to that realization that, that hopefully we can get people to believe that this fee is fair enough. <coughs> you know, the actual uh, volume of water, I don't think, I, I, I've stated this opinion before, I don't think it's actually the volume in this, uh, of the water that we're trying to count here. I, I don't think that's critical. That's just my opinion. It underlies the validity of the, of the fee. Structure. It does. It, it, it does. But it still comes across. No matter how you slice this thing, it's, it's a tax. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is a tax. Yeah. We're trying to make it so that it has that it has uh, a, um, some foundational um, not support, but you know, it's, I it's, disagree it's, with you. It's being linked. You know, you said that three times tonight. I'm going to disagree. <laughs> it's not a tax. It's a fee for service. You know, we are we are taking care of the stormwater that's running off a of property. It's not a tax. It's a fee for the service that we're going to provide to these people. I don't see it as a based tax. on how much runs off your property. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but, but if that's the case, then you should be able to measure it as accurately as and you can. As reasonable. And this is where it's. I mean, it's. It's this, you know, I, I, we're, trying to, we're trying to take something that is, is, we're trying to make something a fee that really is almost impossible to do it. So what we're trying to do is, is use a proxy that is, feels as close as possible to being somewhat fair and equitable, but you can't measure it. And if you did, there'd be a whole bunch of properties that wouldn't pay a dime, and there'd be a whole bunch of properties that would pay a shitload. I mean, and that's where you start, all of a sudden, the whole thing falls apart. That's the reality of, of it. So, I don't know. I mean, I. Focus your gaze, yes, in the right place. <laughs> so, and so, right, so you have to kind of look at it with a little bit of a blur and, and accept the fact that we're using a proxy, which is some, you know, this impervious. I respectfully and, disagree. <laughs> well, you know, maybe we, need to, yeah. maybe we need to talk more about that no, in, in the report. But. You know, I'm, I'm a great man for consensus. If there's a consensus around this table that it's a tax, that's fine. But I, <laughs> oh, I, no. had to, I had to voice no, this, my... This, it's a, this is absolutely... It's a fee. This has yeah. to be a fee. It's yeah. The only way it works is that it's a fee. But unlike other fees, it, the service, the, the, the nexus you know, yeah, between it's, it's the two... It's more tenuous. It's much more tenuous. It's much more tenuous. <laughs> but, it looks, but it looks like a fee. 
But it looks like a big. It looks like a absolutely. Big. And that's and that's because the when you compare it to, when you compare it to a property tax versus a sewer fee, it looks more like a sewer fee. What yes. do we call what we pay when we buy our stickers at the at the at the at the dump? Is that a fee or a tax? We call it a fee. Fee for service. Yeah. 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 Since we're almost out of time, I want to address the mission that Terry brought up. I think it would be a wise thing for us to do to include as the appendix in our report a list of municipal property and state and federal property. Yes. Everybody agree with that? Yeah, we're gonna we need to make a reference to that in the introduction or somewhere okay. in the maybe in the fee model section because that's where we talk about the properties that were right. that were I don't know. That's a good idea, too. Okay. Yeah. Have we made a statement about the properties in beyond the flood control system? No. Chris, are we going to need another meeting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I think we are, too. You know, you have uh, Audubon that lies out beyond the flood control system, and you have the meadows area where you have all these farmers growing potatoes that are flooded every year. I think I think the way we I think the way because at one point in time I was I was of the mind that if you're outside the system you you you're not you're not part of the problem. But but it gets back to this issue of this the, the common word. Oh, no. <laughs> No, that don't just, say it. just because you live outside, I mean, just because you live outside the system doesn't mean you, you're not you're not going to have to pay for the services that we provide for the city. No, I don't mean living outside the system. Yeah. Because living outside the system, both on Highland Road, Ferry Street, Ferry Street, Riverbank Road, have um, collection systems. Oh, okay. So I feel that those are areas that should pay because we do provide collection during the normal rainstorm and in my years here I have never seen um, certainly never seen urban bank road flooded um, depending upon how far you go down uh, you get down to where uh, uh, Harold has a racetrack down there, and that gets flooded out. But uh, um, Island Road, of course, gets flooded. But we also provide drainage for them. So I, I don't think they can get out of that fee. But they may not feel good. But I'm talking about the farmland that's outside the, the area. I, I don't believe that that farmland should be. Uh, I feel, I believe farmland should be exempt, number one. You know. They pay a small fee, because everybody pays a fee. Yeah. That's one of the principles that they were. Yeah. So they may either, you know, in the ERU model, they pay between $15 and up to 10 acres. Yeah, 150 bucks. And, and mine was 130 and so we're sort of in the same. But that could be a refund. I mean, that's a, further down the line, as you go, you could say, Farmland that's, that's in the floodplain is exempt from the tax. So, do we want to discuss that in the principal section? That there's you know, that there's concern about properties that that don't have any that do not benefit or use in any way the the flood control or or stormwater conveyance. They're not going to be. You know, it's like in the same way that if somebody didn't have a toilet and a sink. That they don't use the water or sewer, they're not going to pay a bill. Is this should there be provision for that? Otherwise, you know, and it goes from being a fee to being a tax. It does. You don't you don't pay a sewer fee if you have a septic system, do you? You do? No, you do not. No. I, I phrased the question very poorly. Uh, <laughs> I just looked up. Right yes, now. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you pay in other ways, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not disagreeing no, at all. I just think we need to you know how we want to present this. Yeah. Do we present it? There is a fee connected with 
uh, the dumping of the septage from a home at the wastewater treatment plant. Sure. Right. Yeah. 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 So they, they do pay a fee of sorts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I may, ever so quickly, <clears throat> if you begin exempting properties because they don't derive any benefit from the flood control system, someone out in Leeds could argue that, well, hell, I don't either. Oh, yes, right. they do. Not from the flood control system. Huh. Or high ground. Yeah. We get yeah, where's the map? Uh, it, it's a very slippery thing. Yeah, On the other hand, if you wanted to talk about agricultural property, I think you'd... Yeah, that's, that's, what I'm uh, that's a more interesting conversation for now. That's what I'm talking and there are about. Communities, and there are communities that exempt agricultural Completely. 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 Think of Montana. But why, you know, again, why? Why would you, why would you do, uh, crop, you know, agricultural and not just undeveloped property? Yeah, I, 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 that's, that's, I mean, that's one of these things where, you know, well, undeveloped decision. property has a potential of being developed. Agricultural land, there's no potential for building down Well, what I, was about to, what I was about to say was we use the tax code to incentivize and punish certain types of behavior, but I don't want to say taxes. <laughs> <laughs> the fee code. The, the fee code. code. Which hasn't been developed right. yet, but it's in section four of this report. It's the fee code. <laughs> Do you guys uh, agree with that, uh, that second to last principle that the task force agreed that the fee structure should reflect the goals of the city's master plan to protect open space farmland? No, Where did yeah. that come from? Okay. Because I mean, it's there and nobody... No, I know. We didn't catch it. But now that you brought it up, that was one of the things that did strike me as... as, as was that you, Alex? I've got it highlighted. Right? Is that you? Yeah, well, we did this together. It is the third test. We did talk about it. I mean, in, in, this, in the task force that we, as a city, value mm. open space and... It's not very germane to our chart, though. Well, we don't specifically, the, the thing, it's not specifically dealt with in either of the fee models as a supporting, you know, we're not calling it out specifically. We could, could be called out in credits. Well, it's sort of connected to the credits, but I can see, we can, I mean, you can save the bottom half of that paragraph and just drop the master plan. It says a utility that includes credits for improvements that retain retired runoff, get pay or something. Yes, that should definitely be in there. So eliminate the first sentence? Yeah. So I, would, I would agree with that. That's, it's sort of contradictory uh, if we are going to be charging agricultural. We spent a lot of time talking about conservation. Right. Okay. Are we going to meet again before July the 8th? I think we need to. I think I do. We've got some revisions to do. Yeah, okay. I think when so too. Do? Saturday. Oh, please. <laughs> the first sunny day. No, the we might day. never meet <laughs> again. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> Next Thursday. John has it all sorted together. Like everything. Mm -hmm. So we can see that finally it isn't what we can all agree on. I think that some of us have some more writing to do. We do, but I think if we, set, if we so give much. ourselves a deadline of a, two, two weeks, because really that puts us at 27. That puts us at the 27. It only gives us another week before the July 8th. July 8th, yeah. So. So in the meantime, in that two-week period, we need to individually or in our groups and make revisions, and we need to get it to John, like with at least a week, so you can format it, spell check it, and probably do some additional grammatical stuff, and get this thing into a whole package ready to go. So basically, we have to come, we have to do our stuff within a week, and then meet again in two weeks. All right. The 27th? That work for me. It but does not work for me. I won't be here. They can do final damage. Wait two weeks before we need? We need two weeks? It is two weeks to 27. No, he's asking if we do actually need two weeks. Oh. Well, I, mean, I, I just know I won't be here on the 27th. Um, what about the 26th? Uh, won't be here. 
25th is when I'm leaving, uh, right after I go. I don't write election day. Yeah. It's the day before election is the 24th. What's wrong with next Thursday? Is that too soon? Do you think that's too soon? To meet? Yeah, to have John put it all together by then? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't happen to serve. We could actually just do our revisions and meet and give it to John and say, we got to the eighth, get it done. We do have to just get through a little bit more of it. I, think, I think that's a better okay. I think right. that's a better way to go. The 20th. Okay, the 20th. Okay, 20th. Here. Appreciate it. We want you in. That way, if we run into any serious <laughs> contentions or problems, it gives us another week to, to iron them out, too. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> so it's basically to do the corrections that we talked about. And the yeah. additions and things right. that we talked That's about, yeah. Which are we, and it's not going to take that much time to do yeah. that. But I would, I would hate to have... I think John, I, I think John wants to see it once. Yeah. I got yeah. the feeling that that was the way he envisioned it going forward. <coughs> like once you wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get a question. That joint meeting we're having on the 8th, where's that going to be? Does anybody know yet? Right here. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 8th. Right. The 8th is here. Here we go. Is that your the conference committee? DPW conference committee? That's correct. And that's here. Usually. Okay. Yeah. You may want a bigger venue. I mean, there may be more people. Well, are we all playing in the <coughs> I thought we were. Yeah. Okay. Coming back. Well, yeah. All right. And, and Alex needs to present this whole thing. I need to film it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you need to film wow. Alex. I need to film yeah. Alex, yeah. You heard the I totally missed that opportunity. Took that yeah. Yeah. Sure did. I'm getting slower and slower. <laughs> this, this could be John's thing. All right. And that's part two of John's. We'll post for our group picture next week. Too. I will ask Paul to see if you can find a larger venue. That thing at the police station. What about Hayden? Oh. Right and Green? Because no, like, now that, I hate that. The press has a hold of something for somebody that station. now we've got to deal with that. So. I know. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah. Is it the time? I think yeah. so. Okay, great. See you. Good night, Bob. Good night.